The Universalist Unitarian Church of Riverside is what we are officially called, as you all well know. So it's great to see you all here. And our opening hymn this morning is number eight in the gray hymnal, Mother Spirit, Father Spirit. Feel free to sing as the Spirit moves you, but please only with a mask on. Please stand in body or spirit and join us in singing hymn number eight, Mother Spirit, Father Spirit. remotely by Zoom, where we'll continue live streaming and posting these services on our YouTube channel for our virtual attendees. And I hope there are some out there today. I'm Steve Fuji, Vice President of our Board of Trustees, and I will be your worship associate today. Other members of the worship committee you will hear from today include Alec Peck singing our hymns, also running the sound over there, so we couldn't run the service without him. We welcome you to join us this morning with an open mind and an open heart. And with muted electronic devices, please. So we welcome you to join us this morning. With, oh, I said that already. We come together this morning to remind one another that we are connected in mystery and miracle. Awareness and gratitude. We've come to this time and place to explore different spiritual perspectives together, develop a faith that is personally meaningful, and to bring our gifts of love and acceptance to one another. Welcome and thank you for joining us today. Although the, our doors are open, the pandemic is not over. So while we're in the sanctuary, please keep your mask on while singing or chanting, and let's all take personal responsibility to keep both ourselves and each other safe. Before we move into the service, there are a few announcements we'd like to share. We will mention several websites, email addresses, and phone numbers. At the end of the service, we'll leave a slide up with all this information, and it is available on our website. February is Black History Month. This is an important opportunity to celebrate the achievements that African Americans have accomplished in this country, despite the history of racism and oppression. Um, there's also a, uh, a sound bath at the Center, Center for Spiritual Living today at three o'clock, if anybody's interested in that. Sharing joys and concerns is one of the most important rituals in our community an opportunity to share milestones, losses, achievements, and experiences with one another. Now that our doors are open again on the first Sunday of each month, we can both hear from those in the sanctuary and read the contributions we have received. In front of the pulpit, there's a book where you can write your joys and concerns whenever you're here in the sanctuary. For those of you at home, you can share your joys and concerns throughout the month to uh, send them to the website uh, to uuchurchofriverside at gmail.com. Our next Joys and Concerns will be on March 5th. Please join us for our annual pledge gathering on Sunday, March 12th. 
from 11.30 to 1.30 p.m. in the parish hall. Lunch will be served. We will have a discussion on the direction of our congregation should take the next, for the next year. There will be a full moon circle on Friday, March 4th at 6.30 p.m. It will be held at the home of Pat Coander. The, it's a full moon drum circle, I'm sorry. And the address is in the directory or call the office. We hope to, or you can also ask Pat or any of the regular attendees. And we hope to see you there. All are welcome, including children. And if it's possible, bring a snack to share. The Social and Environmental Justice Committee meeting is today in the annex at 12 noon, 11.30. It says 12 noon here, and I got a note that said 11.30. Okay, sorry. You can find the Zoom link and more information on the website under Social and Environmental Justice. We also refer to it as the SEJ Committee. It's easier. I would now like to invite up Adam Weddinking, Chair of the Social and Environmental Justice Committee, to tell us about their current project. So, no? Oh, okay. <laughs> well, okay, then we won't. And now I invite you to sit back and take a slow, deep breath as we move into the worship hour. You are welcome to read with me the mission statement of our church. Our mission is to foster a diverse religious community that celebrates life, affirms the individual, encourages spiritual growth and open thought, and works to advance social justice and environmental sustainability. Our speaker today is Travis Cannell, a friend of UUCR and part of the Wiccan group that meets regularly at our church. Travis is a longtime preacher, world traveler, and California Baptist University alumni, magic zoologist, Jedi missionary, and 10-year vegan. Oh, I think Jedi is the only true religion for me. <laughs> um, so sermon description, crop circles and food dogs. Oh, my. What do crop circles and food dogs have in common? They're both esoteric symbols found in various nature-based traditions such as Wicca, Thelema, and Taoism. Today we'll explore some links between these belief systems. Uh, right now we'll have the lighting of our candles. First, the Indigenous People's Remembrance Candle, Bill, please. Bill is our expert uh, lighter because oh. it doesn't work for everybody, those, those lighting things. We have two lightings of sacred flames. The first is the Occupied Indigenous People's Remembrance Candle. The second is the lighting of our own chalice, the symbol of our faith. We walk around upon the traditional territories of diverse and sovereign peoples, the original people of this land who continue to cry out for justice and self-determination. This spot we occupy was first the sacred space of several groups of indigenous peoples, including the Cahuilla, the Upeño, and the Serrano. We, the Universalist Unitarian Church of Riverside, light this sacred flame as the stewards of this sacred and holy space. And we are blessed with a space and opportunity to strive to live out our common principles, to bring justice, equity, and compassion into our daily lives, to resist all that threatens the earth and her people, and to be part of a world community with peace, liberty, and justice for all. Let these thoughts carry us forth as we journey and worship together. And uh, uh, Today's reading for the chalice lighting is Flame of Fire by Leslie Paul Kosbau. Flame of fire, spark of the universe that warmed our ancestral hearth, agent of life and death, symbol of truth and freedom, we strive to understand ourselves and our earthly home. Thank you. We have a tradition at UUCR to welcome those who are visitors or perhaps returning after some time away. We know that it can be uncomfortable to stand up and speak in front of others, and so I will now ask for a volunteer from someone who has been here a while to tell us your name and how you found out about our church. We ask you to step close to the mic right here and speak into it directly and clearly so everyone can hear. However, be aware that you will be visible on our Zoom camera and in the recording of this service, which is posted online. Do we have any church members who would like to volunteer? Because if we don't, you have to listen to me. So be warned. Thank you. Please step forward to the mic. Tell us your name, how long you've been here, and how you found out about our church. Good morning. My name is Chris Briggs, and I'm from Riverside. And I think I was first here maybe... 15 years ago, and this is a, a, another 
visit to explore um, what's happening here. So thank you for having me. Thank you and welcome. And that's how it's done. So if you're new here, a visitor or an old friend, please raise your hand to stand up and come up to the mic in front of the pulpit. If there was someone online who would like to introduce themselves, please raise your hand using the Zoom hand raise hand function and we will call on you by Zoom. Please let us know who you are, where you are from, and how you found out about us. Yeah, come on up. Hello. My name is Jeff. Uh, I'm from Grand Terrace. Um, this is my first time here. And uh, I haven't really been to a religious service in a while, but I think the thing that struck out to me with this organization is uh, open-mindedness and non-judgmental. And uh, I was at the end of the day, at the end of the day, just very curious to see what this is about. So thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you for being here and welcome to our church. And so for any other new guests, please join us for socializing and coffee hour after the service out there. We'd love to chat with you out in the parish hall where you can also find our visitor's book, which you may have signed in when you came in. Please leave your name before you leave so that we know you were here and leave your contact information if you want to know about upcoming events. For those online, the best way to get added to the mailing list is to email the church office at admin at uuchurchofriverside.org. Our hymn now is number... 1064 Blue Boat Home from the Teal Hymnal. Feel free to sing as the Spirit moves you, but please only with a mask on. Please stand in body and spirit and join us in singing number 1064 Blue Boat Home. Might as well find the Teal Hymnal. <laughs> This portion of our service is to support our beloved historical church. This can be accomplished several ways. In addition to the weekly collection, 
you may send your checks to the church address, which is shown here. Hopefully, yep. And uh, you may contribute by PayPal using the QR code, which is shown here, as well as on the church website and in the newsletter. Stater Brothers Market gives our church a rebate on Stater groceries cards, which we will have in the church each Sunday. You get the full value, and the church also receives a percentage for free. Please see our treasurer, Dinah Rowe, back there in the red, um, to purchase the gift cards. And please donate as the Spirit moves you by whatever method works best for you. Thank you for your generosity, and to those who give of their time and their talent, thank you for your generous care and attention. Will our ushers now please come forward to receive the collection? Received in the gray hymnal, and I'm ready this time. Feel free to sing as the spirit moves you, but please only with a mask on. Please stand in body or spirit and join us in singing hymn number 402 from you. I receive, and you, those of you on the Zoom, please join us too, even though we can't hear you. today is Crystal of Creation by Tess Baumberger. If there is a heaven, it is right here, right now, in this particular arrangement of nature, this happening of earth, moon and star, this constellation of instance, this laden moment, this flash of recognition, this particle of time. If there is a god or goddess, it is all around us everywhere, in every blinking eye, in every pulsing possibility in every ugliness, every beauty, in every wholeness, every part. If there is an axiom in the universe, it is life, it is love, it is death, it is hatred. It is wanting and needing to be in the crystal of creation. Now let us po po pause for a moment of silence and reflection. says here to wait an appropriate amount of time before the second chime. I hope that was appropriate. 
And now, without further ado, I'd like to introduce Travis Cannell, speaking to us on crop circles and food dogs. Oh, my. Thanks, Steve. Thank you, Grace. Morning. Well, if anyone's wondering what this church is all about, I think that giant stained glass of Christ Jesus is a big clue. The Deer Memorial. But not the whole truth, obviously. So I studied Wicca a little bit. And there's an interesting ritual that I came across while reading. A protective charm meant to protect oneself from unwanted energies. Wicca is a relatively recent term which comes straight to us across the colloquial pond from the United Kingdom, just like Thelema, which is, which is a place I think we all associate with the phenomenon or the modern myth commonly referred to as crop circles. That term could totally be a US thing, crop circles since fairies are very important in Wicca and the United Kingdom has these things called fairy rings, which begs, the qu which begs questions like, what are fairies? And what about these crop circles? and which ancient believers who lived in the United Kingdom wrote about a lot, actually. So did I in college at Cal Baptist. And if you think about a pentagram and study sacred geometry and the Tao, it becomes apparent what's been going on for a long time. White orbs in the sky. <laughs> Some people might shoot them down. Some people play with them. People like me. Lately, there have been reports of strange sightings of white orbs in the sky. Some government officials say there's no evidence that these white orbs are anything more than Chinese spy drones. No evidence. It's really interesting to me that China got the blame, considering they're, they're one of two cultures that I immediately associate with flying white orbs. Flying white orbs constantly show up in Chinese art and Korean art, by the way. And they're usually accompanied by dragons, not dimorphodons more like giant lizards. So is it just art or is it science? Most of, the, most of the depictions I've seen are two dragons with an orb, like all three of them could be out there floating in space, playing, mesmerized by each other's existence. You can see what I'm talking about in the Chinese pavilion down the street from here. Unless you're a muggle. Seriously. The pillars are painted red. There's two stone foo dogs or lion dogs on the ground. And right above the foo dogs, you can see two gold dragons floating with a single flying orb. Lately, there have been news reports of flying white orbs in the sky. 
And they even said those orbs came from China. And so I ask again, is the Chinese pavilion just art or is it science? I suppose that question could be asked a lot about Chinese culture, like it's been asked about all natural science communities such as Wicca and the Lema, both of which have been heavily influenced by one alchemical image in particular I want to draw attention to. In light of the recent reports of sightings of flying white orbs, The alchemical image known as vitriol, which refers to the primary substance required in all alchemical transmutations, even gods. The image vitriol depicts a mythical beast with the face of a dog, a mane like a lion, with an imaginary tail. And the beast is firmly seated on earth, taking a literal bite out of a bohemian sun, like the one I have tattooed on my ribs. The fact that the sun is bleeding in the image tells us that the bite is meant to be literal and not just a matter of perspective, although it's both. The blood from the sun literalistically drips onto the literalistic grass upon which the green lion is seated. The image itself is a statement about the natural world, concocted by European alchemists during the Renaissance era, and has since become a prominent symbol of hope in the Wiccan community. Like the cross became for Christians. In fact, the two images are almost identical. The green lion eats a bleeding sun and the cross, both symbols of transformation, of new beginnings. Even though they're usually done in black and white, they're always red, like the pillars of the Chinese pavilion down the street with the lion dogs on the ground made of black and white stone. Floating next to the lion dogs down the street are white stone wheels, which would probably make a poof, very much like the one made a couple of weeks ago over the South Carolina coast. If it were flying in the air, like that Chinese spy drone. As you can tell, I'm seeing a connection between Asian and European natural science. The connection scared me when I saw the connection, not just in what is observable in nature, but also in what is practiced in private. I'm talking about a protective charm, which fundamentally connects European natural science with Taoism at both the most universal and the most personal levels. Thus, the cobs is in the coup. The motion is taught at the fundamental level in Wicca and in Taoism. Thalamites or Thelemites do it 
when they work something called the lesser banishing ritual. And there's a certain beauty in the act of making a baby. And that beauty is in the truth of the motion itself. If one motion can be true, then so must at least one other in the act of making a baby. How many other motions are true then? And what real world effects can they have? The motion required to make a baby has real world effects, like a mudra or a spell called Apollo's Wager, which a few people at this church saw me perform in real life. The Chinese have stockpiled this evidence of this nature, and it kind of looks like religion, because religion brings to mind that playful sense of fear or awe, which is the same awe or fear or play that nature can inspire. To some, white orbs flying in the sky seem like an unnatural threat that needs to be destroyed. Other people, like me, tend to actually expect to see white orbs flying around. And that expectation has a direct correspondence to certain known facts about the natural world, such as its multidimensionality and its ability to manifest reality. Its ability nature's ability. As scripture says in the book of the law, every man and every woman is a star, which is a statement about the microcosmic activity of nature. As one Bible commentator, Panabis Gaia Ladria puts it, Every man and every woman is a star, is the word. And the Chinese pavilion down the street is that word made flesh for us here in February 2023. For at its top, you'll find what's made to look like a dragon descending from the sky. Compared to the lion dog statues on the ground, the mold of the descending dragon is smaller, which says, the architect had a keen understanding of perception. And assuming the pavilion tells a story, notice that around the rim of the rooftop, there's the same beast, but fully formed with a body and a writer. The descending dragon looks like just the face of a foo dog with flames growing from their head. Below the rim are two golden dragons floating with an oar between them. I believe that's the architect's scientific, scientific representation of the atmosphere birds fly high in, which is where those white orbs keep getting sighted or spotted. Not only by me, but by others in my community who are so grateful for the work of John Greer, founder of SETI, the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. And also behind the English translation of an old Latin text whose workings have provable results. That book could be why there has been so many UFO, UFO sightings lately. But you know what? Just imagine an electric eel swimming in concentric circles through thick seaweed, like they're bonding with a piece of glowing algae. Now imagine the eel turns invisible, like a squid. The United Kingdom has experienced this. 
and the U.S. is just getting a taste. If you watch the videos of crop circles being formed in the United Kingdom, notice that the cause could, could be floating invisible giant eels or fairies playing with a floating white orb, or the white orb could be the fairy. Not that the rings are accidental. I'm just describing what the formation looks like. It seems like that's the reality the Chinese accepted long ago. Strange ring formations in the crops, coupled with floating orbs. Dogs play with balls. And lions invoke intrigue, to say the least. The correspondence is between the green lion eating the bleeding sun, the legend of the food dog, and the passion of the Christ are too strong to ignore. Which is not to say that anyone's stealing ideas. I'm not saying anyone stole someone else's idea about how to describe the microcosmical activity of nature. I'm saying these descriptions attest to the truth of reality, which we're seeing and which really freaks us out, like lightning freaks us out. If you can move your body in just the right way, you can, you can make a baby. Which has made some people wonder if certain movements can summon wormholes. <laughs> or even crack the moon. Or open up other dimensions. Thank you, Travis. Okay. Um, hmm. Lost my stuff here. Went back mm -hmm. to the uh, desktop. I was worried that might happen. Okay. Moving right along. Hopefully. Okay, now we go to our closing hymn, number 175, We Celebrate the Web of Life, from the Gray Hymnal, and as I've said multiple times, because it's written here, please feel free to sing as the Spirit moves you, um, but please only with a mask on, please stand in body or spirit, and join us in singing hymn number 175, We Celebrate the Web of Life.
May we make space every day to remember what the ancients knew, what has been woven into the tissue of our hearts since the evolution of humankind, that the universe is a miraculous world to be celebrated, and that a miracle that happens every day is no less a miracle. Thank you, Travis, for sharing your valuable time and insights with us this morning. It's sincerely appreciated, and we look forward to seeing you again. For those of you who would like to stay in the sanctuary for 10 to 15 minutes for questions or to share some discussion or observations from the service, please remain in the sanctuary online. Please be aware that these comments will be posted online. And for those of you who are on Zoom, feel free to participate in the discussion as well. And for the rest of you, you are now welcome to adjourn to the parish hall. And is there anyone online who'd like to share anything with us? Apparently not. Okay. Well, if there are no further comments, thank you for sharing your thoughts. Now please join us in the parish hall for further fellowship. Well, except you can stay here if you want to have a discussion, if Travis is willing to, to participate. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, are there any comments in person right now? Okay, and as I said, um, a discussion can follow. So bring Travis back up here. He's a well, he didn't, hmm. should I say this online? Everybody better worship this dog if I tell you what he is. <laughs> you hear that world? I'll tell you in private. <laughs> He's a type of cattle dog. How about that? <laughs> oh, earlier when I looked back at the screen, I was looking for the symbol for Islam. When I mentioned the cracking of the moon and did this with my pinky. Woo! That was heavy to say. <laughs> We can't explain everything. We don't understand everything. There's probably a lot out there that we don't know about. And um, I think we try to come up with meanings and significance and mystery about those things. So thank you. Yeah. A thin line between mysticism and natural phenomenon. Especially when you like take into consideration, like if you from an atheist from an atheistic perspective, looking at the natural world and not ignoring natural science in the Middle East, where the word jinn is common. Yeah, that line seemed very thin. <laughs> Sir. Slide in there. Having to do with the whole crop circle thing. That one gets interesting because you, on one hand, you see harmonic structures and they seem to be largely human, you know, base five, uh, pentadactylic uh, type uh, linkages. One thing that did get interesting is for a while there, there was a contest between people who could fake crop circles and the ones, the quote unquote real deal. Uh, well, I don't know why I threw that in there. The fake ones broke the branches, right? Uh, there was, yeah, there was a problem because you're walking on like wheat stalks and corn stalks, 
the so they, what they were trying to do is basically put down the uh, the plants with a series of boards. And whereas they did show that there were some uh, students that could come up with some pretty good uh, setups as far as the beatdown of uh, uh, for an artificial crop circle, including you know many secondary circles, uh, bordering lines, really beautiful stuff. Uh, that although there were so people beautiful. that could do that, there were they did notice a certain form on the ones that were more legit. They noticed a certain form of blowout at, at, at a certain point. Especially if they saw a combination with white orbs floating around. <laughs> I don't know about the white orbs. So we're, we're not getting into that right now. <laughs> uh, that wasn't part of the uh, uh, phenomenology that we had. I'm strictly going for the idea that said that there was some form of electromagnetic magnetic blowout that collapsed the stalks with the other setup. And I would personally think that... Uh, uh, schlepping a bunch of big, long uh, posts, uh, yeah, pieces of lumber back and forth through the area would produce breakages between one section of the area you were trying to do via uh, human artistry and another. So there is the question that says, we do have a world where, you know, some of these things were invented. And we do also have a world where we actually have to say, I don't know, or that looks really strange. Uh, uh, or And essentially we wind up with a world that is uh, uh, larger than we, can po than we might be able to know. That in order to look at some of these things, we can use the skeptical part of us. Uh, but we can, oh, we there's the approach of wonder, and you know, it's like when you see magic on uh, uh, TV, so uh, you know, the David Copperfield type stuff. Part of me wants there to be magic in the world, so I don't want to pierce that illusion, but there's also part of me that doesn't want to see science punctured and does not want to, uh, uh, to see that happen either. So we wind up with an interesting world. Yes, where there are literally publishers that the vast majority of the population have no idea about the books they publish. I don't want to see. T I don't want to see science. I love science so much because I can, ooh. I did a scientific experiment right here in the lobby. Am I right, David? He said, he shook his head, yes. And that was a demonstration of a scientific principle called the observer's effect, which human beings can put themselves in the middle of and experience a universal phenomenon right here. <laughs> it feels like omnipotence, what I'm talking about, what I did with David. I don't want to see science tarnished either. You know who you know who really is unscientific? Neil deGrasse Tyson. That guy, man, he says such ignorant stuff. And I know he's ignorant. He's either lying, he's either straight up lying to people, trying to get them to the truth or something. Because he just won't read occult stuff from what I've heard, from what I can hear, from what he says, if I take him at his word. People like that, people like him and John MacArthur. John MacArthur wrote a book called K uh, Chaos. Charismatic Chaos. And I like John MacArthur for his other little pamphlet called uh, Knowing God's Will, but Charismatic Chaos. 
I just, he wrote that a long time ago, and I hope that he followed up afterwards after, after that. But his YouTube videos seem like, I mean, he's all, Jesus is going to destroy the earth. Therefore, drive your SUVs and your trucks with your diesel. Who cares? Jesus is going to destroy this place anyways. That's unscientific. And the, yeah, I'm against that. I think a lot of human progress has been made because somebody asked what if. Um, so I think those realms of both mysticism, esoterica, and science may have a lot of similarities in common. Amen. I'm in Ra. This is Wes Wesley St. George Clooney, by the way. Wesley. Come here. Come here. Good boy. So if, Good boy. <laughs> so if there are no other comments out there, um, any anyone online? No? Okay. And thank you. We are adjourned and we can go into the parish hall for more fellowship.